and we're live! Welcome Woo. to episode 212 Holy of Moses. Crafty Boys. You have been watching us since 2015, 2000, 20, 2015, and we're not stopping, so suck it up and so live with it. you. Yeah, that's that's it really came out as a threat, didn't it? So, uh, hi, how's it going? Welcome to our show, and welcome to the first show we've done uh, this week that's not related to Christmas. So if anyone says anything about Christmas, shh, save yeah. that for the advent calendar. Okay. And guess what? We're all here, and it's kind of weird. Uh, there's two of us in two places. That's yeah. yeah. whacked. Yeah. So, so we got uh, you guys in Vancouver, and Dave and I are in uh, Victoria here. So yeah. in the right city. That's right. Uh, and Locke, of course, flew in just for this yes, show. Exactly uh, right. yeah. there's, there's no reason yeah. he's here otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, as soon as the show is done, he's hitting the 1 p.m. 1 a.m., sorry. Getting the, the hell out of Dodge. <laughs> Keep eating your peanuts, Dave. So anyway... <laughs> Uh, this beer is actually a beer that we've been trying to get to for a long time, probably about at least a month, I think. I, I would think about four weeks, yeah. And uh, it has been difficult to find on the West Coast, on the West Coast, on the mainland. And uh, it seems to be available over in Victoria quite often. So that's why when Dave was sleeping the other night and I got back to, uh, to uh, my parents' home, yeah. I was like, wait a minute, that beer's in the fridge. Alan had a great suggestion 20 minutes before. Take Dave's beer. So I'm like, oh, so I stole his beer while he was sleeping, although he didn't notice that I gave him a peck on the cheek when I left. And uh, yeah, and he farted like a mother. Like, holy cow. What, what so, cheek? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, right. <laughs> Those aren't two pillows. Those aren't pillows. So, uh, yeah, so I took his beer, and that's why he's over at Allen's tonight. And uh, there you go. So this beer, of course, is by Cannery Brewing. It is called Heist Maple Stout. Indeed. And it better be as good as Alan says it is. Okay, so I Tell tried it story. last year, not on the show, just, just on my own for their 2018 edition, and it was amazing. We've had maple stouts before, and they've always kind of like – they left a little bit of something to be desired. You often couldn't taste the maple uh, in the beer. Uh, this one is different. Last year, anyway, you could taste the maple. It was very distinctive. Um, so I wanted to do it on the show, but we were kind of a little bit late. Nobody else could get it last year. This year, I wanted to be able to do it. So hopefully they use the same recipe this year as they did the previous year, but we'll find out. A little bit of something to be desired. You often couldn't taste the maple. Uh, in the beer. Just sorry. That was weird. Uh, yeah. So let's open this up because right. I'm trying to try it. Um, here we go. All right. And we're doing the... Oh, my God. That is thick as oil. All right. Mm -hmm. Making sure the pour is done properly here. So we got the correct amount of head. Yeah. yeah. That's how so there's there's what I've got poured. I'm trying to pour it properly. All right. Ta. Cheers. Cheers. Mm -hmm. All Indeed. right. First of all, the smell test. It smells of maple. It, it smells, smells mapley. It smells so good. Here we go. The taste test. Oh my God! That's oh. pancakes. It does. It's pancakes. It is pancakes. You're trying to drink a pancake. It it's like drinking pancakes. It is. It's, <laughs> it's, they took pancakes. They put it in in the in the wart, and this is what we've got. <laughs> so according to this. Uh, 18 million of liquid gold. What does that even mean? I got to say, right away, for something in danger of being too sweet, there is a nice dry finish on this thing. No? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm They're calling it the best truly Canadian stout ever. I got to say, the, uh, the, the artwork on the can is quite stunning. Like, they've got Robin here fighting 
blob or something. Is that who that is? <laughs> and over here, it's like the Riddler uh, is controlling the blob. I don't quite know what this. Let, let me let me. See this, this is oh. the people that were pulling that heist a few years back. They stole that. Right. Monster. So the story is that there they was some sort of like a huge heist or something involving I don't know maple syrup or something. So there was a okay. How how would a uh, there is uh, there is more than um, uh, so eighteen million dollars worth of Canadian gold it says here which that makes a little more sense in that context, uh, but the problem is you can barely read it because the text is not exactly there's two things wrong with it it's close to the background color, and it's also a cursive font so it's hard to read Beetlejuice so, Beetlejuice Beetlejuice yeah. $18 million of liquid gold was stolen in the Great Maple Syrup Heist. You can taste it in... Was this that a real thing? Truly Canadian stout. Uh, rip off I think it. Google needs to get in All right, Google's action. asking, so talk while I find this. Okay, so, so we're going to talk. So um, Now, this is a uh, different packaging this year. Last year, uh, it was in a bottle, in a bomber bottle. This year they've switched to cans. Um, I think that's a good move. Uh, mm. Apparently in four packs, although here in Victoria we we're only able to find it in, in uh, single cans. Um, so okay, I found I found the story okay. by the way. Uh, the Great Canadian Maple Heist is an informal name for a months-long theft between 2011 and 2012 of nearly 3,000 tons of maple syrup, valued at 18.7 million dollars. From a storage facility in Quebec. Wow. I, if I were to, to go through the trouble of that, I would want to swim in it. Like I would, I like dump, <laughs> dump, uh, fill this this pool here, and I want to swim in it. Uh, the facility was operated by the Federation of the Quebec Maple Syrup Producers, uh, who represents seventy seven percent of the global the global the global maple syrup supply, <laughs> and have been compared to a cartel. Well, there we go then. Uh, adjusted for con conflation. Oh my god, adjusted for inflation. This heist is the most valuable in Canadian history. Wow. So, basically, over the course of several months, uh, nearly 10,000 barrels were stolen in a suspected insider job from their facility in Quebec. The syrup was stored in unmarked white metal barrels inspected only once a year. Thieves used trucks to transport the barrels to a remote sugar shack where they siphoned off the maple syrup refilling the barrels with water and then return them to the facility. What the hell? <laughs> As the operation progressed, the thieves started siphoning syrup directly off barrels in the reserve without filling them. Uh, the stolen syrup was trucked to the south into Vermont and New Brunswick, where it was trafficked in many small batches to reduce suspicion. It was typically sold to a legitimate syrup distributor who were unaware of the... Uh, origin of the syrup and uh, of course at the end of 2012 police arrested 17 people uh related to the theft now what the hell okay i'm, I'm just trying to picture selling syrup on the street like could you imagine like hey hey come here, come here. you think of like you know like jewels or money or you know, drugs or something like that, but syrup? I mean, come on. It doesn't get much more Canadian than that. It doesn't. I guess not. <clears throat> Apparently, uh, the theft is also alluded to in a bunch of TV shows uh, where basically you can sell it in plain sight uh, because it's more expensive than smuggling cocaine or smuggled cocaine. What? Weird. Okay, so there you go. You learned it here first. Cocaine is not worth as much uh for uh, as as canadian maple syrup um <laughs> it's but, you know, all day for 60 dollars a gram i'm trying to come up with a new line there uh yeah so anyway but you know as far as our like maple mm -hmm. stouts go because we've had a couple this one is by far the best in this my standing actually i i the more i drink it the more i like this um and and as i remarked before i think it's really just it's it's the fact that they somehow managed to finish dry without a lot of. It's not sticking to your mouth. Excessive sweetness or whatever. Like no. it's like, this is a, this is 
going down yeah and, and really well and that's the thing right is that when you have when you have beer that is doing these weird things in my mm. opinion weird but mm. um you know they they have there's a high level of failure i think for a lot of the beers that we've had on the show you know they're they're trying stuff which is great but the reason that they're not perfect or the best thing that they could have done uh is is not the fact it's not the you know the quality of the product is is really decent but it's that finish part that really is the issue where yeah, yeah. you know this well, one is not sticking to my mouth yeah. which some porters and some and mm -hmm. some stuff yeah. have done so uh -huh. dave what do you think i'm not kidding it is nice definitely um i actually don't mind sweeter beers so that whole dry finish thing isn't, you know, for me, it, it's neither here nor there. It's mm. nice, but um, it doesn't make or break this thing. I, yeah. I just like the flavor. I love the color. Mm. The color is amazing. By the way, uh, on Netflix, there is a, uh, a series called Dirty Money. Apparently, the maple syrup heist is on Netflix. There's a documentary about the event. So there you go. Mm -hmm. I suggest you uh, check it out. It came out about a year ago, so it should be there. Uh, but yeah, the maple syrup heist of Can in Canadian history. I mean, that's something that I would hope uh, Pierre Burton would, uh, would, if he were he still around, would have to cover. Um, so, what kind of a score are we giving this thing? Ooh, I don't know. Dave, let's hear from you first because you know you had to work really late tonight. So let's pretend for a minute you're you're home, you just you know you got your slippers on, you're in front of the fire, crackling on your computer screen, and you are uh, settling in for a, a, a cold winter's night. Is this beer going to be the thing that you would have and consume to complete that scene that I have painted with a theater of the mind? Yes. <clears throat> Nicely painted. Would you buy this again? Um, yeah, I would buy this again. Totally. So if we can find it. Yeah, if you can find it. But I think we probably still have some around it. I think so. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna say seven five eight. Okay, seven so five eight. All right. So yeah. sorry, was that seven five and then eight or seven point five? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Alan, I'm I'm kind of leaning towards like uh, you know an eight to a nine. Okay. I'm I'm thinking like a nine, just because for a maple stout, a maple stout is hard to make and have it be good. Um, sure. So, you know, they've kind of struck a, a rare winner here. So I, I kind of want to give them you know credit where credit is due. So I'll give them a nine. Hmm. Okay, luck. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm visualizing myself being at home. Um, there's a woman wearing nothing but a witch's hat serving me this drink on a platter made of silver. And um, yeah, 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 I'm gonna go nine. Yeah, I'm just uh, yeah, visualizing it. And it's, it's yeah, it's good. <laughs> wearing nothing but a witch's hat that that set the bar you said you before. said no christmas so uh, i know this is true uh uh and i broke my own rule almost almost not quite almost i didn't say elves santa or anything else <laughs> um i'm okay you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna go for a nine as well because i i'm still surprised that i don't taste the beer you know five minutes later um i mean i'm and i'm grateful for that so uh yeah i don't know there you go i think that that is probably one of the coolest things that we can actually do um because you know awesome uh all right so on. great score moving so on uh, this is a really important story that I think we need to cover uh, is the topping of a beer can. Now, when you drop a can of beer, so let's say here's this can and you drop it, hits the ground and you're like, oh, my God, I can't open that can now. What is the typical solution? What is the one that you've always had that, you, that you've always tried? Well, you I, I, maybe the one of the slow openers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do a slow open over a sink. 
Okay. So now for something that I've, I've heard of many, many times and I've probably done, uh, although I tend to, I've, I've tend to sort of morphed into the slow open, uh, is that if you tap the can, somehow that makes the beer settle. So I would never want to spill this beer. Like right now, this beer should never ever grace the bottom of a sink in your kitchen. It should be at least injected up through your nostrils. Yeah. So apparently, according to scientists who actually spent time to figure this out, have determined that no tapping cans is dumb and doesn't do anything. So yeah, I, I would as a PSA from the crafty boys, right? If you drop a can of beer or hopefully never an entire 12 pack of cans, mm. like, like, like the, uh, advent calendar this year. Um, don't tap your cans, make sure you do the slow sensual peel of releasing a bit of the gas. And if you must sacrifice yourself like so, because okay, so, so here, here's a follow up beer outweighs the needs. I of you. want to know more about the, about the, the study design on this. Um, now my understanding is, is so they used Carlsberg was their was their test subject. And the, that, that, that alone makes me suspicious because Carlsberg, well, you know, they provided more than a thousand three hundred and thirty milliliter cans. Mm. Okay, well, here's what I want to know. It sounds like they, they did a you know a fairly longitudinal study there. And like, and the by the way, the tapping, they did it three times. One, two, three on each can. Oh, but that's not how you do it. Well, this is the thing, right? It's like they tap by flicking them three times on the side. You don't okay. flick Side, I want to know something. I, hey, hey, hey. I want to know something. On the, anyway. Okay. Like this. So, yeah, 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 exactly. Okay. So basically, so if we've actually the the man, right here on the show, live, we have debunked this whole study of a thousand cans that were tapped three times on the side after being shaken. Okay. So if you drop a can, how long, like, so you drop it, okay? Mm -hmm. How long is like? Is there a certain amount of time you can wait before you can safely open it like normal? Uh, that's a very good question because they only tapped. However, it says here the testers who opened the cans didn't know whether the uh, can had been shaken or tapped. They were weighed before and after to find out how much beer had escaped. The unspilt beer also didn't go to waste just as an afterthought they offered it to their staff and students at the university along with snacks on average shaken cans lost 3.45 grams of beer on opening compared with half a gram for unshake okay how the hell do you lose half a can a half a gram of beer in an un oh, wait, wait a second wait a second this is a scientific study and they're measuring a liquid in grams well, you take a gram and yeah, of course. Why not? Well, no, because it would be in milliliters, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but 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 liters and milliliters is volume, it's not weight. Yeah, but it's the same thing anyway. It's a liquid. Well, yeah, but yeah, one yeah. one gram of of uh, this is why in the metric system it doesn't awesome. sound very scientific. Yeah, but, 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 but the density might might vary. Granted, since there's also carbonation going on. There's also true. carbonation going on, and there is also alcohol involved. No, Car which well, is, maybe not is... Carlsberg. But... <laughs> <laughs> so, are you saying, is... Locke, that Carlsberg would weigh more, sorry, less than a Guinness? Uh, that is an interesting question. I do you see this tagline for the Carlsberg website? Probably the best beer in the world. Probably. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> they're not going all out to say we are the best beer in the world. They're just saying, yeah, probably. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Um, you know, we make beer. Uh, we're called Carlsberg. We do it a long time. Uh, you know, Carlsberg was founded in what? 1847. It's been 150 years of us making beer. Probably the best. But so, you know what? That tells me that the people that make the beer don't actually drink it. They just make it and ship it out. 
So this topic is really timely for me because after the Christmas craft beer show that I went to on my way out, I bought three cans of beer mm -hmm. and I was, I was kind of drunk. Uh, let's face it. And I'm waiting out on the sidewalk and I'm whole, cradling my beer and one fell onto the pavement yeah. and it was quite dented. So I don't know, like I haven't opened it yet. It's the, it's one that I'm hoping that we're going to do on a, on another show. Um, which we can do because now, you know, we could do it next week because Dave could come over here or something and do it um, if he can't find it. Uh, but yeah, I, I I don't know if I should open it or not. Yeah, you're good now. Okay, I'm, I'm good. I also want to point out that this whole learning that Carlsberg thinks it's probably the best beer is sounding very suspicious. And I'd like to swap out Carlsberg with uh, Elsinore, so which we know is a very suspicious beer, and we know is also Danish. Exactly. So you know, it, it, there's 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 something going on there. So coincidence? <laughs> I think not. The Crafty Boys have debunked a scientific study today and established <laughs> a connection to uh, you know evil. There's something beer. wrong in the state of Denmark. Exactly. I think we have a new line of work, boys. Beer mystery solved right here. Dun, dun, dun. Where's the crafty boys for solving one beer mystery at a time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, basically, today we've learned that the Cannery Brewing Heist beer is really damn It's fine. delicious. Yeah, I got to say. Now, would you drink five of these in a row, or is this something that you should really... Yeah, you know what? The, like, the astonishing thing about this is I think you could have more than one of these in a row and not feel like the... Yeah, know, exactly, because like... uh, some, some stouts you can kind of feel gross. Uh, by the way, this is rocking in at 5.5 uh, bits, bits of alcohol. <laughs> Ah, it's not as many alcohol, alcohol as I, I know, know totally. Like that, but but, uh, but the international beer units is coming in at forty. So really, it, I'm shocked it's that high. It's uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, first out there. Uh, well, it's probably because of the sweetness factor. So I don't know. It's it's. I think you know. To be honest, I don't think half the breweries even know. They're kind of like ah, it's a I don't know. Balanced Th drink. For, throw throw for a number on there of like yeah. ten. A surprise, yeah, actually, that's a good way to call it balanced. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's this is this is up there with um, with Guinness uh, because I find that to be a balanced beer, at least on my palate anyway. Um, but also the I, and I've said it before, the uh, Fuggles and Warlock, the beat me up, uh, beat me yeah. up, uh, espresso oh, stout, which is a very um, surprisingly not overpowered by the flavors. It's got that nice blend. There was actually a beer we had recently too, like in the last few months, that did that same thing. Um, mm -hmm. Can't think of what it was, but it was I was it another? Stout? I don't remember. But essentially, yeah, there's very few beers out there that actually, you know, are able to hit that that bar. And uh, yeah, so hmm. so overall, thumbs up from everybody. Well I done, so. Dave. Yep, you're working really hard lately. Um, Yes. You're looking a little, little, looking a little tired, man. Are you, you sleeping well? Like, what's going on? Does, has anybody walked into your place and stolen your beer lately? Uh, not in the last few nights, no. Okay, well, hey, yeah. you know, just just yeah. make it sure that, you know, Alan, like, you know, Alan, under the rock left of the door, you will find a key. <laughs> Break in after midnight every day. I, I may have to install a security system. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, but anyway, on that note, uh, it is Christmas time, and we know that people's time is what short. You to mention that? What, what, oh, uh, it's July. <laughs> the sun is out, and um, uh, the uh, the um, the uh, hang on, uh, yeah, there, there, yeah. So the sun is out. It's blistering hot. There's nothing to indicate any holiday thing. At all, Locke is on his summer vacation from uh, work, work. <laughs> and, and um, yes. So, uh, Alan, did you play music that was similarly related to the other Advent stuff at the beginning? No. Okay, good. All right, so we're covered. No Great. one is, is going to be the wiser. 
we are totally covered with being a summer show. So, yes, we recorded this in July, released it in um, October. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I've totally lost my train of thought. Where is Cannery Brewing? Pitticton. Thank you, because I was going to say they were in Squamish, which I always say no, about Cannery Brewing. They are in Penticton. I actually saw the brewery when uh, when I was there last, not this past summer, but the summer before. Did you um, stop? I didn't go in, but I drove past it. Oh, well, I missed opportunities. Yeah. But anyway, uh, we'll leave it at that. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to do all that stuff uh, because, you know, with the whole sharing and the, the bell clicking and telling people about the show because we are incredibly grateful that you guys are doing this and telling people because, you know, our numbers are skyrocketing and we don't know why, but we love you for it. Um, and also don't forget, uh, we do have this advent calendar in a couple of months that's happening. Uh, there will be a playlist on the front of the, uh, the YouTube channel, so check that out. And as always, Alan, take us out. Don't forget to buy or anything, Dave.